Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you, it is while you're watching this. The second of my, I suppose I should really call them OnlyFans films, because they're special requests or things I'm helping with. And it's in reply to a question from Hairback on my CB500 review film about which Givy tank lock ring would work with the CB500. Unfortunately, the CB500 ceased production 20 years ago now. Um, I'm still wearing my black armband, and I was unable to help out with the question. But there is an alternative in the form of a magnetic tank bag so I thought I'd start another playlist about stuff that's at the back of my garage which I haven't used for ages but I keep hold of and first up is the aforementioned magnetic tank bag probably still available under a different name but at the time when I bought this getting on for 25 years ago it was an Oxford Sports Lifetime Luggage and it looks something like this and as you can see it sticks very well to the side of a car there's a few things you need to be careful of when you're using one of these. First of all, you need a bike with a metal fuel tank, and by which I mean steel rather than aluminium. Another thing to do before you fit the tank bag is always give it a quick wipe either side over the magnets just to make sure there aren't any metal particles stuck to them or scratch your paint. And then, quite simply, tank bag on tank, hence the name tank bag. Just give it a quick feel for if all the magnets are in the right place. They do move up and down. There's three either side on this one. And they're in long pockets. Then move your handlebars either side. You can see that as the handlebars are moved to the right, the tank bag's flexing where it's being hit. Simply reposition like so. And look at this funny strap on the front. This does serve a purpose. It wraps around the headstock and goes onto two quick release clips so that it'll keep the the tank bag in place in the event that you're going fast enough for it to blow off. Apparently these are tested just on the magnets at over 100 miles an hour so it shouldn't really be a problem. So wrap it around the headstock and you'll notice as well that on the tank bag itself there's a couple of small pieces of fabric underneath the female ends of the clips that fit between the clips and the paint to save your paint. There's a clear pocket on the top writing instructions down or having a map in it. And the free top tip for every viewer of this film is to always write the instructions bottom to top, not top to bottom. Especially if you're doing an out and back run, such as I used to do to the Dragon Rally. The first instructions, I'm going to have a fairly good idea where I'm going. They're going to be nearest my house. The last instructions are going to be closest to the destination. Now when you're near your destination, you can have a quick glance down, read the instructions and you're not taking your eyes too far off the road. Do you really want to be looking all the way to your groin for the last few turns on roads you're not familiar with when things could be changing quite quickly? And of course, as we're in the UK, you're going to be bouncing into potholes. No, nope. write the first instructions at the bottom, write the last ones at the top. Makes more sense and is a bit safer. Oxford, in their wisdom, made these as waterproof as a tea bag, so they come with a big rain hood or shower cap. Fits over the top, elasticated. This isn't the right one for the tank bag. This is for a tail pack. The reason being I'm showing it here is because the one for the tank bag blew off on a motorway. These are elasticated. They're not the greatest things in the world. Um, bit of a pain in the neck if you lose one because you can't buy them individually. They also come with a shoulder strap for if you want to uh, take the tank bag off your bike when you're wandering about and uh, they just clip on at the top. Another thing, if you're carrying it about at all, you have two little clips here, another uh, pinch clip, which means that the flap stays shut and hopefully you stop any debris getting onto the magnets. And then you can also unzip the bottom part of the tank bag and just have a map pocket. Um, you could leave that on the bike if you wanted, and you've also got rucksack straps to carry the rest of the tank bag about. If you park somewhere that's uh, less than salubrious, you might have some little scrote nick the bit of your tank bag they can get, which means that you're uh, then stuck with a rucksack. All in all, magnetic tank bags serve a slightly different purpose to the lock ring type. They're larger, they sit directly on the tank, you can move them about, reposition them slightly. Downsides are they could move about a little bit, then the fixings aren't quite as secure as a mechanical one. But you can fit them to various bikes, they tend to be larger, although you do need a tank of a shape that will actually accept a, a magnetic tank bag. Obviously the lock ring types where they fit over the filler cap will lock in, although the position of filler caps these days and the shape of tanks mean that it can sometimes be a bit of a pain to get anything larger than a bag capable of carrying your phone and maybe wallet onto the tank ring itself. 
Anyway, I found a few other things while I was at the back of the garage, so there'll be some other films of these in future when I get time to make them. So, happy riding everybody, we're starting to head towards Easter, which is the start of the riding season for a lot of people. Hope to see you on the road soon, take care, bye.